What's up guys, GT Game here and welcome back to uh, Train Simulator 2017 this is, the one I'm playing. Uh, unless it automatically updates, I don't know. Quite a short train today, we're in Essex Yard on the Marias Pass. And uh, kind of a special locomotive, I don't know the story behind it. But it's the Independence SD40-2, uh, I think. I don't know, when it comes to trains, I'm not an expert, I just enjoy playing the game. I like scenery, I like travelling. So yeah, we're in Essex Yard, we've got a green light, and today we are going to Kalispell. So without further ado, I'm going to pop in the cab. Uh, wipers are V, so I'm going to turn them on. I'm going to put the train into forward, and take the brakes off. And I believe, from much one, we are ready to go. Yeah, we're in a short train today, it's only like 20 carriages, so it should be quite reactive uh, when it comes to braking and accelerating, which is good because most of this route is downhill. Um, I'm aware that this is a Union Pacific train. Well, I wasn't aware of that when I started the game, I'll be honest, I just noticed that. And as far as I know, Union Pacific don't run this, the Mar Marias Pass. Um, so yeah, let's just overlook that, let's just go, ooh, that's a pretty lo locomotive, and uh, let's get on our way. So we're taking, I don't know much about Kalispell, from what I've seen it's a small town, it's in Montana, so this is kind of like, in my head we're doing the winter supply route, it's about to start snowing really heavy, so we needed to send some, uh, say, fuel, bit of gravel, that's picking up some gravel to take out of there, and these freight cars are full of like food. And then we got some grain and hops and stuff to do some keep the local manufacturing going. Right, we'll pull out on the main line now. Uh, is that nope, I thought that was a red light then. It's not, fortunately. Uh, I am using a controller, but I have to use the keyboard as well for some commands like zoom in and out. Um, because it's just it's weird on the controller. So the mouse might occasionally pop up, but eh, it's not that much, it's not that distracting. Right, our speed limit's just gone up to 60. We're coming up towards Red Eagle, that little turnaround spot I showed you. So let's get our move on. Nice bit of acceleration. Fun fact, and I believe this is true, but if not, I'm sure someone will correct me in the comments. If you've got a train full of, like, say, petrol or diesel or anything like that, anything that could randomly go kaboom, then you have to, by law, put one of those little... Like, some kind of car between the engine and the fuel. Like, you know, the box cars or even a gondola like that would do, okay? Just something non-flammable between the, the, the locomotive and the fuel cars. And as far as I know, the reasoning for that is if this train was to derail right now, the, there would be a spacer between the explosion and the cars. So if it does go kaboom, the driver is slightly more likely to survive. And also the spilt fuel or whatever will not, it'll be less likely to come into contact with the boiling hot engine. So that's my cool little fact about trains. I think that only applies to America though, because I'm pretty sure I've seen like uh, fuel tankers right behind trains in the UK. But then they could have been carrying non fun stuff, so I don't know for sure. Once again, I'm sure if that's wrong or if there's anything to add, someone will do it in the comments. That's the beautiful thing about YouTube. Or the internet in general actually. If you're wrong, a 12 year old will tell you. Now, to be fair, the internet, some people are not happy with the internet, like they don't like it. But it is the combination of all of human knowledge and opinion. So, if you say something, yeah, you'll get the, the trolls who laugh at you because it's easy, it's un anonymous. But then, if you need genuine information, there are also places you can go to get that. I've just realised my microphone is up. I hope my audio's not been ruined for this entire journey. I will not be happy. This my microphone was in the wrong place. Yeah, if, if you need some form of... Um, let, let's say you have an embarrassing medical problem. 
you can literally go and find somewhere on the internet where someone will tell you what that is and if you should be concerned. Or you'll get a nice interesting conversation about, oh yeah, that could be this, and then someone goes, nah, it's probably this, but get it checked anyway. And that's the beautiful thing about the internet. God, I hope my audio is okay for this video. I am not going to be happy if it's not. We're coming up on Nyak Main. Uh, is that anything important? Nyak Main. Uh, oh. The track condenses into one. That's probably why there's a 50 limit coming up. So if I reduce power now, I don't have to waste energy in braking. Logic. That's what that is. 50 miles an hour, 30, call it 40 miles. Mm. Yeah, it's probably going to be... I'm going to try and edit this video down to about 45 minutes, I would have thought. Because otherwise it's going to be a very long video. Assuming it gets made because my audio is not ruined. God, I'll be so pissed if it is. <laughs> That's, that would be really annoying. Like, you know when you spend ages doing something and it epically fails? And you just go, nope, that's it. I'm done with this. I'm not doing this again. And then in about two hours you go, ah, screw it, I'll play it anyway. That's going to be one of those things if my audio is ruined. It's like, uh, it reminds me of SimCity. Uh, not SimCity, sorry. City Skylines. I bought that on Steam the other day. It was on sale. And I've always wanted to get it, but I've always been like, will I have enough time to, to play that? And I've spent, like, super ages, like hours and hours making this map the other day because I had some time and then it had a fundamental problem which was the electricity <laughs> this is going to sound so stupid I put all the power plants and all the power related things on a little island and uh, then I changed the terrain to make a hydroelectric dam and I removed the power cables and there was no like OCD way I could put them anymore and the hydroelectric dam wouldn't work and it wouldn't carry power across so I just had like a huge problem with power and I was like this city's ruined so I rage quit and I didn't save it because I was angry and rage quitting and being like the most stereotypical gamer like this is bullshit man and then about an hour later I went, actually no, I've, it's a simple solution, I just moved the power plant, but I forgot to save the game, so it, I didn't have a file and I was really upset. So yeah, that, that happened. Ooh, nice little valley carved into a rock. That's cool. Can we see anything interesting up ahead? So we are basically following the path of the river still. I suspect we will be all the way down to white, to not Whitefish, Columbia Falls. Oh! I see with my little eye, I spy with my little eye, up ahead, a flashing yellow signal. And I have no idea what that means. You would think I would by now, but I don't. Um, yellow usually means slow down. Um, the problem with this, with America, is if you don't know the signals, you slow down, let's say you do like 20, 10, 20, 15, 20 miles an hour, the next signal could be like 12 million miles away, but there are massive gaps between the signals in America. Oh, that's cool, you can see the windscreen wipers through the cab. So yeah, I, I don't know what that means and I don't want to slow down. That's a dangerous attitude to have. That's that's why they wouldn't hire me as a train driver. Oh wow, the camera actually fits. It'd be cool if there was like an echo. I think one thing I will say about this game is the architecture ar architecture architecture that it's based on. I think it's based on a really old games engine. I think it's like a really old version of I'm not actually sure. But it's an old game engine, so it's limited in what it can do. And if you bear that in mind, like this game's been going since, what, 2012-ish? Maybe even older than that. So, without changing the engine, 
it has achieved quite a lot this game like it does look br brilliant for what it is and like if you look at train simulator the uh, train sim world sorry that is a new engine pretty much and that's why it looks so much better because that does use the unreal engine which is a newer engine and it has a lot better like lighting and just general things like that so this game has done quite a lot with its limited resources I think that would be a fair thing to say about this game see what I mean I'm trying to spot the next signal along to see what color it is but it is like a million miles away oh there is that it uh, red over green oh right okay I know what it means then so usually the signals are green over red. That means you're good to go, full speed ahead. So flashing amber over red, which is what I believe we have or had, I think that meant like slow down, be prepared to slow down this something up ahead. We're, we're turning off the track. And then this signal here, which is red over green, that means you're good to go at a reduced speed. Because you can see this sign here, if I go down here, uh, passenger and freight 25 miles an hour, but only if you're changing track, which is what we're doing. You can see there, the tracks are aligned to turn right. So that signal is warning us that we're turning off the main line onto a smaller track, and I swear I could hear the train then, and you need to be prepared to slow the hell down. And then you can see on the map at the bottom, that there's a 25 limit coming up, so that does make sense. Ah, I understand the thing. I am impressed with myself. That's pretty cool. I like that. I've worked the thing out. So, we are turning off at Belton East, number 2998, with a 25 mile an hour limit. We're only 30, call it 32 miles away, a little less than. Um, and I don't know how much of that is that long straight bit of track, probably 10 miles, it's a very long... Like I drove it the other day in a HST, which is a high speed train from the UK, just because I could. And even flat out I managed to hit 125 for a decent amount of time. So, yeah, it's that train's not exactly known for its acceleration, so it is definitely quite a long straight. So we're going to be taking the right track. Ah, the frame rate gets a bit low as I get further ahead. It's trying to draw everything in. And then this is... What it, what town is this? Belton. So there's Belton. And if I remember from the time-lapse video I did, which that's that time-lapse still amazes me, how many people watched that. Like, it was 5 hours and 22 minutes long, and it's got like 300 views. I only did that as a joke. I find that hilarious that how many people were like, yeah, I'll watch that. I guess they put it on as like, if you have dual monitor and you only need to do one thing, like write a text, you put something on the other screen, like a live stream or whatever, perhaps people were doing that with it. I, I suspect no one actually sat there and watched five and a half hours hours of me driving a train badly with no voiceover. Oh well. Yeah, if I remember from that video, there's this three track section and then it's quite fast from there on out all the way down to Columbia Falls and then we are there's gonna be a single section, single track section, and then we've got a turn off there uh, at a Y, like a Y junction. And that'll take us down towards Kalispell. Oh, wrong one. Another thing I changed about this game. <laughs> On controller, accelerate is left trigger and decelerate is right trigger. That's backwards. That The amount of times I've done an emergency brake trying to accelerate. And it's not great doing an emergency start because it's not as simple as, oops, didn't mean to do that, cancel that. Nope. You've got to wait for the train to stop, and then reset the the brakes, and then put it back into forwards and start accelerating again. It's not great. What's that 15 mile an hour limit for? Oh, the track turning off now. 
Yeah, it's, it's not fun. Try not to do an emergency stop in a train. I'm sure your passengers will hate you for it. Um, it's uh, the amount of work it is to reset. I did it in a TGV once. I was doing 320 kilometers per hour. That's 200 miles per hour. I had to wait for it to go all the way to a stop, reset the brakes, and I had a problem resetting the brakes because I was on an uphill section, so every time I released them to reset them, the train would roll away and it wouldn't let me get going. So I had to basically let the train roll somewhere where it was leveler, so I had somewhere to sort the brakes out, reset the brakes, and then I had to get going again, and then it took about 10 minutes to get up to 200 miles per hour. So try, try not to do that if it can be avoided. Here is Belton. Why is there this one raised bit? Is that for like the locomotive or...? Oh, we got UPS as well. Try and get rid of the little man icon. Here's our train! Let's do a cool little slow pan. Oh, we're actually at West Glacier. Trying to get like, a cool camera shot or a pan. Action pan. Yeah, full Hollywood. That kind of failed epically, but yeah, well. Whatever. We're now entering the uh, single track section at the west end of, yeah, the west end of Belton or West Glacier, whatever it is, I'm not actually sure. Uh, it's giving us a whistle board for something. Give it a quick blast because I'm not sure what it's for. Uh, it's level crossing, oh well. What do they call them in America? Isn't it railroad crossing they call them in America? We call them level crossing because they're like level. <laughs> as far as it goes with that. No, I need to decelerate. I had to use my keyboard for that. So long ass curve and then parallel a road for a bit. I still haven't got over how eerie it is. It's too quiet. There needs to be some kind of sound effect. But I do admire the little detail of the logs here and there, and... I also like the fact that when you set it to snow, some old games, genuinely, the snow was just like, nah. The trees wouldn't have snow on them or anything, it would just be like, the same weather, but snow on the ground, and it's like, really? One of the games on my phone has, if you set it to snow... I'm gonna go full throttle here, because it's a 60 limit. If you set it to snow, all you get is the little animation of the snow falling, and nothing else changes. Which is always fun. Yeah, at least there's that little detail, I suppose. God, that's loud. I've even turned it down, but that was loud. God damn it, we're doing 50, we just got up to speed. Well, we're still not even at 60. And now we've got another flashing amber over red. Which means I guess we're turning off the main line again? How far are we from... So we're there. What's that? Koran? Co Koran? Uh, and then there's Columbia. And then we go down this little leg here where the track splits. So we're not massively far away from Columbia. But I do kind of want to know, because it doesn't always display the speed limit. So I do want to know how far it is until we have to slow down. Because that's caught me out a lot and I really don't want to come this far and derail. So not long after we get a road either side of the track. 
Oh, Torna Witch. Coram East. I'm going to assume that that's the slowdown point. But then what's the speed limit there? That's a good question. So here it is. What is the speed limit? Does it reduce or is it 60 miles an hour? East Coram. I can't see a speed limit sign. We're turning left this time. I guess... Um, problem is that I know that signals have speed limits associated with the colours. So I guess it's like... I have no idea. I, I'm going to assume I can still do 60 through here. Well, that's probably a dangerous assumption, but you know. Let's, uh, let's get a nice little pan shot of the train passing. One, two, three, four. Yeah, that's moving some speed. Don't derail, don't derail. It's 25 miles an hour! I can't even slow down. We're just going to have to assume we can make that. I couldn't slow down because of the camera view. <laughs> Right, okay, um, let, let's go pretty heavy on these brakes here, that's emergency, oh it let me reduce that time, thank you very much, sometimes if you go into emergency it won't let you reduce the brakes, I should have, as I was looking at it thinking, I was thinking to myself, it probably would be, looking at that curve, it probably is a 25, but I thought nah, it would display that, that would be ridiculous for you to assume that it's 25, why is it accelerating again? We're on level ground. Yeah, why why you do that? Yeah, I was looking at it thinking, yeah, it's, it's, it wouldn't be a 25, but is it? Is it? Is it not? It turns out it was. I don't know what it is with me always having to see what's up ahead. Oh, are we turning off here? No, we got a green over red. Believe then. Oh, that's cool. That has a sound effect. The car. An actual moving car, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, green, so here is where it goes back. I'm going to just assume that that's 25 through there. Once again, I don't know. But that seems to make sense to me. We're just about to go back to a single track section now at the west end of Coram. We're going west, I have to keep remind myself of that. Uh, 55 miles per hour. It's a nice little number. That is kind of confusing me though, how we're 22 miles away, going 25 miles per hour, about to go 55. Yeah, it's giving me an ETA of over one hour. I find that a little bit not right, that's hard to believe. I don't see why our ETA would be one hour. Like, there's no way that's right. Accelerating a bit early. Oh, there it goes. Very loud, these trains. Very, very loud. Yeah, why would it be one hour? That, surely that's not right. We're about to come into Colombia. And then we got to take this long track section here, and I'm pretty sure it's like 30 miles an hour along the entire length of this, and then we got to stop at Kalispell. Um, so I don't know about that, that seems a little bit inaccurate to me. I need to start braking, we're coming up quite fast on a 40 mile an hour limit. 
and I'd rather not derail this far into the journey, as I said earlier. That should be okay. Get those brakes released. Maybe a bit of power just to get us back up to 40. But yeah, we are not far now off coming into Columbia Falls, which makes me think that that really long straight section is like 15 miles long. So yeah, that could take a while. Ah well. As I said, I won't show you all of it. It's going to be very long, very straight, and a little bit tedious if I did. But that's fine. I'll stick it out for you guys. I'm, I'm fine with that. Uh, I love the way this train has wing mirrors. Are they wing mirrors? Ooh, does the window open? That's my. Uh, that's a good little question. I believe it does. Um, there's usually like a catch. like not drag it. Ah, I guess this, this one doesn't open. Does the door open? No. Ah, that's a little bit disappointing. I like it when doors and stuff open in a game. Oh well. At least the windows, uh, the windscreen wipers work. Fully equipped FRA223 glazing, that's probably the windows. Weight 393,000 pounds. What's that, 200 tons, give or take? Damn. That's, that's, that's quite heavy. Now, I know trains are heavy in general, but that's, that's pretty damn heavy, that is. That's, you don't want to get hit by that. I think that's just a good bit of... Uh, advice in in life in general don't get hit by a train it it kind of hurts a little bit like it will actually really mess you up if you get hit by a train taking the left track that might be a 25 limit oh that's a lot of signs um does this one have a speed limit sign i really hope so no it doesn't con kelly Yeah, I believe this is like the start of Columbia Falls. Which is where... What the hell? Oh, that's a big-ass warehouse. A really big-ass warehouse. Yeah, I believe Columbia Falls is where the track splits off to go to Kalispell. And if we're taking the left track, that's a good sign. We may have to stop at the little slip on the way into Kalispell because I know that quite often the points are set wrong on the way into the siding. Um, so hopefully not, but we might have to stop and do that. We're one mile away from a 20 mile an hour zone and we are just coming into Columbia, so I do need to start slowing down. Um, that 20 zone, that's probably for Kalispell, for the little slip. Uh, I'm not really sure though. It is a decently tight turn into the Callis Bell siding, um, so hopefully it's for that, because I'm not sure how far away we are, if I'm being brutally honest. I think I am slowing down a little too early though, and I want to see up ahead to see what is in store for us. Right, so we got this overhead gantry here. And that's where we're turning off. So yeah, that's the 20 zone there. We're turning off, and then we're going straight here. That needs to be straight. Yep, it is. And I believe there's one up here, not this one. The next one will be set incorrectly for our purposes. This one. Yes, yeah, so we're going to have to stop the train to sort that out. I need to brake to get down to 20 in time. We should be okay, though. We should manage this. Columbia Falls straight leg Y. I am going to cut quite a lot of this out, I feel. Either or I've remembered it wrong. Oh, we're not slow enough. Crap. I miscalculated that. Yeah, if I remember right, though, it's pretty much a dead straight track through farmland. So it's not that interesting. But before we get there, we've got to set that point straight. 
Um, should be pretty easy to do, as long as I break in time, which I didn't last time. Yeah, so the main Marias Pass goes off to our right there. That goes to Whitefish. Uh, in the other direction, from where we came, at the other end of the pass is Shelby. And I used to have Trains 2006, which was a fun game. I used to love building stuff on that. Um, the route that came with that was the Marias Pass, and it only went from Shelby to not, not far past Cutbank, which is the next station along. I also love the little detail that they made up parts of the route just because, eh, this is boring. Let's stick an oil refinery by there. <laughs> I love that. Right, so off to our right there. There's another track converging. And uh, we need to slow down and rearrange the points where it joins. Which I believe is just up ahead there. Can I zoom in? Yes, I can. So there it is. We need to stop in time for that so we can get out and reset the points. I can't zoom back in. There it goes. I've always wondered how often do, do train drivers actually have to do this? And do they know that they've got to do it? Or do they have to just slow right down for every point and check its alignment? Because I can see that again pretty boring pretty quick. Starting a break now, so our little engineer can jump out. Or do they... Because I imagine on the main line the points are kind of automatic. They get set automatically. But do they have to do it on smaller branch lines? Do they just assume oh, the point will be set incorrectly here? Right, let's take a nice little walk down and reset the points. And then let's get on our way to... Uh, come on. There they go. Let's get on our way down to Kalispell. Release the brakes. Forward and go. 25 limit. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's 25 all the way there. Let's just start going slowly to get some traction and increase the power. Otherwise you could wheel slip. Here we go! There she goes, starting to get some speed up now. I love the little saying that makes as it goes over the crack. Just a little very quiet ting of the metal. They did do a really good job with the sounds of the actual trains, like gotta be fair to that. It does sound pretty real. Just drop the throttle down a little bit until the back of the train passes the 25 mile an hour speed limit. Coming up on a big road here. I did the sequence wrong then. <laughs> I did long, short, short, long. It's fine though. Right, we got 13.8 miles at 25 miles per hour. What's that? just over half hour so yeah I'm, I'm definitely gonna cut some of this out I might do some scenic shots of the train passing and I'll bring you back as we are edging towards Kalispell
And here we are guys, two and a half miles out, coming to the end of our journey from, uh, what was it, Essex Yard to Kalispell Yard. About 55 miles and it only took me an hour and 40 minutes. <laughs> oh man, it's not that hard to see is it, why that hour where I did the full length of the route was 5 hours and 20 something minutes long. That really, I, I started it. Um, it was Shelby to Whitefish I did, and between Shelby and Cutbank, it's like 70 mile an hour limit, so I thought, ah, that won't take that long, two hours maybe, I can, that's easy, I can do that, nope, that was wrong, six hours I spent making that video, if you include editing it, well, probably longer than that, actually, probably seven hours, eight hours, if you include editing it and all that nonsense, then it took like 12 hours to upload on my old internet. <laughs> it just wasn't worth it. But either way, we are coming towards the end and Kalispell will finally be able to get their fuel and their food. It's probably all tin tuna, you know, just to spite them. We got a little lumber mill on the right here. I checked the map. And we're starting to come into the main town here. Across a nice little highway, probably the I something or other. And then it gets a bit curvy, a bit uphill until we get to the main yard which is just over here that, that's something I've always found weird about America the amount of like railroad crossings there are instead of building bridges or tunnels they're just like yep let's, let's stick the track through the roads but then to be fair they're less frequent the trains over there aren't they if they was to build railroad crossings on the track by my house You'd be looking at it going off every five to ten minutes at least. Right, we're actually going to start going uphill now, so we need to add some power. Only 1.7 miles out. It, to be fair, it didn't feel like I was recording for over an hour and... Well, probably three quarters by now. It didn't feel that bad. I don't know, I do enjoy this game. There are a few minor things I change about it, as I discussed earlier, but... Overall, it is a decent game. I just wouldn't spend six grand on the DLC. <laughs> That's how much it costs. I looked at it the other day. If you was to buy all the DLC for Train Simulator 2020, including the main game, I think it was something like 6,250 odd pounds. Like, the, the people actually pay that much. People actually pay that much for the whole game. And I'm like, are you kidding? Like, seriously. <laughs> I've, I've spent about £100 on this game so far. And I thought that was excessive. But the amount of money some people spend is absolutely outrageous. I, I, you could buy a full gaming PC for that. Like, a really, really good one. I, I'd consider my gaming PC pretty good. And that only cost me about two and a half grand With all the accessories and the peripherals. For £6,250, I would build, like, the best computer in my country, probably, uh, if you exclude, like, servers and data centers and stuff. Like, that is an absolutely insane amount of money to spend on a game. I wonder how many people have actually paid that, have actually bought all of the DLC for this game. It's probably more than I'd care to think. I, I get why there's so many, like people might want the occasional, ooh that one goes past my nan's house sort of thing. So they'll buy one DLC and the combination of the amount of people doing that, every DLC will get bought. But to actually go out and spend six and a half grand on a game is mind boggling. Like I love OCRP, but if they said, yeah yeah, six and a half grand joining for you, yeah no thanks. I'll, uh, I'll build my own community for less than that. Either way, I got a bit sidetracked then, excuse the pun. We are coming into Kalispell. We're less than a mile from our destination and I cut the power a bit too early then. Uh, because of the amount of crossings, I'm just going to activate the bell instead of honking at every single one. I think that would get the message across. It looks like a reasonably sized town though, Carlos Bell. Yeah, it's 
probably a few thousand residents. It's like your average town, so it's easy to see why there was a railroad built there. For all the towns people to get their food. That looks like a hotel there. Oh, it literally says it on it. I was going to say, that's definitely a hotel. Is that all of them now? Nope, oh, there's one. <laughs> and I think this is the line we're stopping on by here. Pretty sure it is. Uh, yeah, that would make sense. Yeah, I'll leave the bell on until this final crossing up here. The thing that strikes me odd about Montana is how everything is amazingly flat but then you also have the Rockies at the end of it. It's like really, really flat, and then all of a sudden just massive mountains and hills. It's cool, but odd mix. Like, you think it'd like be flat, and then it'd get a bit hillier. But no, from what I've seen, it looks like it just goes straight from, here's a few winding dunes to, here's a massive mountain, have fun. Oh, sugar. I didn't even see that speed limit then. It's fine though, here's where we're stopping. I'm not an expert, that, but that's not 0.12 of a mile. Oh, we're on the wrong track. <laughs> oh no. Oh, that's not fun. Gonna have to chuck this bad boy in reverse. Notice how the ETA going up. <laughs> so yeah, sorry mate, you're never ever gonna get there. That bell must get annoying to train drivers. Right, we just need to clear the actual points here. Stop. Stop. Right, we can switch track now. There it goes. Perfect. And forwards. Brakes off. Let's go. Right, anyway guys, we are practically there. I mean, we're on the same track. <laughs> it's like not that far away, a few hundred feet, 400 feet. And uh, intuition tells me that we're not going to fit the entire length of this train into this siding. So I'm going to do my best, but I don't think it will fit. We're also going to be blocking all the other sidings here. I could turn that off now, that's driving me a little bit mental. Yeah, we're not going to fit. So I'm going to call it here. I think we were speeding a bit then. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video in the SD40 slash 2 independent. Dash 2? Yeah, I think it's dash 2. And uh, I will see you for the next video, hopefully. So have a good day, and I'll see you next time. Peace out, guys.